All right, hi there. Hey, now that we've got your pre-sketch traced onto the Bristol board nice and carefully, this is my pre-sketch nice and dark. My uh, tracing on my Bristol board is fairly light. I can erase a little bit down once, I, and once I'm going to color into that area. Um, but again, I have tons of stuff going on here. Lots of little things that you don't quite have to emulate how many little things I have. But what I did... Um, up until or off camera just a few moments ago I took this area and on my pre-sketch I started to experiment with what colors I want to use and how hard to press and and so on um, so that's what your pre-sketch for is at this point use it as just something to practice with I didn't do everything in, in color just a little um, a little sample of what to do right up there so now I have a, a decent idea of how I want to get this started um, but before we do this, I want to just remind you of a couple of things that, that the expectation is. And that is a few of these ideas. Of, we want to try to capture form. Remember, form is trying to capture something that's three-dimensional. Like my finger is a form. All right? there's, there's highlights over on this side. There's some shade over on this side. Um, there's a little bit of reflected light you know, right here on the edge in, in between that shadow. And the, and, the, and the meat of the shadow on this finger. So this is a really simple thing like these two little, you know, pasta noodles or something. If you were to think of a light coming in, we would have some, I'm going to really sh shade sloppy here. You would have some shade on this side, maybe a little bit over on this side and, and capture that highlight in the center. Uh, same thing with this one. You would have a little bit of shade, a little bit of shade. You might have a cast shadow landing onto that one in the background with a little more shading under here. And I know, again, this is really sloppy, but just to give you the idea, you'll see more in the samples and more on the work that I do. Um, if you have one thing kind of just, just going behind another and you don't want to... Um, do the cast shadow it's just not going to work out that way make sure this one back here is just a little bit darker and that can fade away and again i'm shading very sloppy here it can kind of do it all the way around and whatever is in here can be a little bit lighter just to help this one pop forward what we're also looking a lot for is when you have to blend one color into another make sure you let that first color fade away then the next whatever color it is you can start start that color right where the first color fades away see that and then really overlap that first color and now I'm going to press lighter and I can use the first color again to act as a blending tool I can use um, um, a white to kind of act like a blending tool if you need to dull that color down a little bit because yellow is the opposite of violet you can use yellow as a blending tool you just have to kind of play with play around with those kind of things um, as uh, you are working on your pre-sketch remember we're not going to do any shading like this we're not going to do rows of shading we're always working remember the shading rules from from um, other assignments and from art one we're always using those little circles unless we're getting into little details but use those little circles that overlap a lot and then hold that pencil farther back to get light get lighter than you think you might need to then get in there and really push the darks all right so that's just a couple reminders back to this and i'm just going to get a little bit of this going and then i'll do portions of it in uh, time lapse so it goes faster I am not going to finish this thing this quarter um, or during this um, assignment period because I'm making other videos and I'll be helping you guys. Um, but I just want to kind of maybe describe and show how I might get started. On my pre-sketch, I have a couple of different ideas as far as how to do this octopus. And that's what I'm going to start with and the blue sky and some of the water. Um, right here I wrote down brown, orange, yellow. Because that's, I like that tone right there a little bit better than this one over here. Also notice I'm trying to capture that highlight right down the middle of this um, tentacle that makes up the O. 
So this, this helps me remember what color goes down first, second, and third. And then I'm going to use a little bit of white to um, blend it. And I'm going to use a little bit of brown maybe to add a little texture where it's necessary. So um, I'm going to start off with what did I say? Uh, some brown, some lightly some brown um, over on this side and let it kind of fade in. Remember, I'm tr trying to keep that highlight nice and bright. The brighter the highlights are, um, the more it'll appear that it's round. And if you really want this to be a round thing, typically the highlight, it'll, it'll get there gradually. It won't be a, a hard edge. That'll kind of give it that, that sense of roundness. So. With color pencil, you're not going to, a lot, a lot of times, especially you only have a set of 12, you're going to have to work at blending colors together. It's not all going to be the exact right color right with one pencil that you use. That's why it's important to practice on a piece of scratch paper. Let me get this going. And again, I'm holding this pencil really far back. I knew from my warm up, my practice, that I wasn't going to press very hard. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of orange because the uh, um, the octopus that I was looking at had kind of a a warm orangey brown feel. And speaking of that, um, I want to let you know that right now I'm working from my phone. Whoop! There it is. There's the octopus I was looking at. So I can have my phone as a reference. Uh, for color, um, I took a picture of my computer screen. You guys can work right from your computer screen or take a picture of your computer screen or find the same image on your phone and take a screenshot and keep it uh, keep it handy. Don't don't uh, just bookmark the website because then you use up data and all that and you can't enlarge as well and you know take a screenshot. Of the uh, of the image that you want, so you can really have it handy all the time. Okay, I'm just doing a little patch of this. I'm gonna press a little harder with yellow because not much is gonna happen, but I just want to kind of give it a glow. And I, there's no way in the world I'm matching this color perfectly, not even close. And these little white um, spots on him, I'm not gonna worry about that. I think it's too much detail to have to worry about. But there is a little bit of texture on this guy once in a while. Um, there's, I can definitely see some orangey glow around above his eye. There's a, there's a, a pale yellowy feel in there, so that's why I'm going to use a little bit of yellow in here. Let the yellow kind of bounce into the highlight a little bit. Now, I don't think it's dark enough next to the highlight, so I'm going to add a little more orange and maybe a little more brown. And so this is the kind of way you go at it. Um, just build up from light to dark. Um, I figured on the tentacles, I was going to use, no, let's do that one, a little bit of brown. There's this little lip right between the tentacle and the little suction cups. And this little lip had like a little shadow. So I'm going to try to separate the tentacles from the, um, no, I'm sorry, this little suction cups from the tentacles. I'm even going to try to leave that little bit of reflected light. I'm going to come up close, see if you can see this and not get too blurry. I'm going to leave that little piece of reflected light right there so these two areas don't blend into each other and it'll almost look like that that little lip that's kind of sticking up like that um, I think that'll be a good little feature to have on other parts of other tentacles as well and then I think I was going to use very lightly some black just to kind of see where the suction cups were and maybe a little dot inside each each tentacle that I can fit a dot into. Let's see if that kind of does it. And I'll get some shading 
maybe in between some of the tentacles, so it looks like there's that, that little um, support of the tentacle, I'm sorry, of the uh, um, suction cup. So it's, it's almost like you're a surgeon. That's, that's kind of how I imagine it. You have all these tools off to the side, and you're going to go back and forth between each tool and kind of make little adjustments as you go. If you're the kind of person that likes to do all of the tentacles, that first undercoat of brown and then come over with orange or whatever it is you're drawing, you know, in that way, that's fine. That's not the way I work. Um, I tend to kind of finish off an area and then kind of work ahead a little bit. Um, I still kind of feel like I can go a little darker here. A little, bit of, a little more brown and orange. And each time I do, that little highlight comes to life a little bit more. Plus, if I go a little bit darker out here on the edge, it's going to have a little more contrast to the white of the paper. I'm also going to use some white to help get this kind of blended and looking nice and solid. I'm pressing kind of firmly with this. But I, I don't think I'm really done with all the color yet. So that's, the, that's kind of the finishing touch to do this. Um, I might try to just throw some white on these tentacles as well. And that's how I'm going to start doing that. Um, I think those are kind of dark. I don't like how dark those are. I might try to erase them down a little bit so they don't stand out quite so much. Now, color pencil will erase to a point. So now I just kind of grade them out. Um, just so they don't stand out too dark compared to the rest of it. All right, that's all I'm going to do at this speed. I'll, I'll take some um, little segments of time lapse and put them together as I work. Um, but again, I'm not going to finish this whole thing, but um, I might come back and talk to you a little bit if some certain things um, occur to me. Otherwise, this is uh, where you're going to go from here. Keep this paper in good condition. Keep it covered. Keep it in a spot where it's, nothing's going to happen to it. Don't let your cat walk on it. Don't let your little brother or sister um, you know, use it for their crayon work and, and things like that. Really try to have a protected area and a protected space. And again, try to work on a nice, hard, flat, clean um, place. All right. We'll talk to you again soon.